On May 11th, four people were killed and many more injured during an anti-drug trafficking operation run by the Honduran military and the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration. The victims were two pregnant women, a child, and a young father. Since then, the DEA has suspended Operation Anvil. But victims continue to search for justice, and human rights groups are pushing the U.S. Congress to investigate. Annie Bird is the co-founder of Rights Action and discusses where the case stands now. There has been no serious investigation of this massacre. Um, other than those carried out by human rights organizations. And it's very clear that there were um, innocent bystanders killed by um, armed for security forces under U.S. command, um, whether they were killed directly by U.S. agents or by Honduran, Honduran agents under the command of the DEA. Essentially, the, the State Department and the DEA have had basically no response to the victims and said this is all entirely a problem of the um, Honduran government, even though it was, and they admit it was, a, an operation directed by um, the U.S. DEA. Um, s some members of Congress and the Senate have been interested and responsive and asking some questions of the DEA and the State Department. Um, but, you know, as yet, there's been no compensation of the victims, no, you know, no one's paid for medical expenses. There are really serious um, needs that were left um, with the f surviving family and the surviving victims that nobody's responded to. Nobody's paid for any of these operations. Um, Wilmer's had to be carried out in a, in a private hospital. Um, Lucio's was the public hospital, but it was done badly. Hilda's also having to pay huge expenses in terms of um, travel. And then, you know, the family members of the victims, um, Candelario Trapp's children have dropped out of school because they can't pay for um, school, you know, because secondary school in Honduras um, is the, the paid for by the families. Juana Jackson's sister is struggling to take care of her two young children that were left, as is Emerson's, you know, widow. There's also not been any serious examination of um, the U.S. policies. I mean, if if the DEA is going to arm agents and put them in a country with a non-functional justice system, um, they have to come up with a way of holding, you know, people responsible when it, when bystanders are killed. Um, and it's not, you know, no one could look at the investigation that was carried out by the um, Honduran Attorney General's office and say that that was in any way a serious investigation of the massacre of four people. Often when investigations that look this bad come out, it the, the perception that comes across is that um, there's a lack of capacity in the um, Honduran um, Invest justice system, but actually um, what I would argue is that it goes beyond that, that there's a lack of political will to carry out a real investigation. It's not that the Honduran authorities don't know that when an incident like this happens you should immediately impound the weapons and conduct ballistics testing. It's that there's not a political will to, um, in, in, for that to happen. Um, so investigators don't do it because they feel that their jobs could be at risk, um, that it's not encouraged um, until, you know, maybe political pressure extends over months and months and finally they feel the need to, to do something to cover their tracks. The drug war in Honduras exactly coincides with areas where there's acute conflicts over natural resources, whether that's land, petroleum, rivers for hydroelectric dams or mines. Um, and that's what the conflict is in Honduras today, more than about drug trafficking. It's about natural resources. There's um, a, a lot of land conflicts in Honduras today, essentially because in the 1990s the agrarian reform laws were changed and and basically through, through violence um, illegal title transfers happened. And because people are fighting in the courts to regain their land and beginning to have some success, um, there's been um, lawyers who have been killed. Um, they can't, campesino organizations, um, commu small farmers who are involved in land conflicts can't find lawyers to defend them because 
they're all threatened um, and, and run off by um, people with a lot of influence in the government and apparently enough influence to levy um, support from the U.S. military. Recently there was a case uh, in which four farms, four plantations, were returned to campesinos after 18 years of struggling to get their land back. And the lawyer defending them from appeals um, after they had won was murdered because the um, African palm planters, if they can't beat them in court, they'll kill the lawyers. I mean, essentially, or threaten them or bribe them. And so campesino organizations can no longer obtain lawyers. The U.S. is becoming directly involved in those land conflicts and often using the infrastructure of the drug war um, to support security forces, which are getting involved in other kinds of conflicts which have nothing to do with the drug war.